Hello everybody. So after my somewhat emotional video from yesterday, where I was reporting on what was happening with Iran uh, firing missiles at Israel and how I was very scared about this uh, actually now kicking off this wider uh, Middle Eastern war and the next big Gulf War, I would like to use today to reflect with a little bit more distance about what we have learned in the meantime, what the strike was and how it is now being portrayed in the different media spheres because at the moment we are now about one and a half days away from the these um, rockets missiles flying over and into Israel um, it is somewhat interesting to see what um, what came what is being reported by the by the by the different outlets so first of all it seems to be unclear so far how large the damage actually is that these missiles caused and how intentionally calibrated this was. There are two narratives out there at least. The one is that this was an intentional, another one of these intentional uh, uh, non-lethal strikes of Iran and to me this seems very plausible, but that are at the same time meant to send a very clear message to Israel that Israel is highly vulnerable to Iranian um, rocket attacks. So the, the thing here is that especially if we follow the thinking of John Mearsheimer, who by the way um, sent out another one of his substacks, a very short one. John Mearsheimer still interprets what uh, I I Iran is doing as re-establishing what he calls escalation dominance. The, the, the message that it is Iran that is able to escalate to the next level and it is and not actually Israel that, that has, the, um, has that potential. He, he uses the Tehran Times and what the Tehran Times is saying as a as a proof that this is the actual strategy. So to re-establish fear also in Israel of the capabilities that Iran has, even without uh, nuclear weapons. And John Mearsheimer said, uh, quotes uh, two people. The first one is the uh, foreign mi foreign minister of uh, Iran, uh, Abbas Ar Arak. Arachi, um, who says that our action is concluded unless the Israel regime decides to invite further retaliation. In that scenario, our response will be stronger and more powerful. So um, it, Israel, Iran is trying to say, we will stop at this. We will stop here. Um, you will not have additional casualties, but leave, uh, scale it down. I mean, don't do not counter attack. Do not attack us. Um, which, if the Israelis take that, would establish that Iran, in fact, uh, is the one who has the uh, who has the longer guns, right? The bigger guns. Um, which is now why we are in this horrible situation in which um, the Israeli uh, Netanyahu and co are all arguing that we have to strike back and we have to really cause hurt. Um, the second source that Mersheimer is citing is the um, these multiple IRGC, so Iran um, Revolutionary Guard affiliated outlets and Telegram channel that report, quote, Iran has warned the US, if you target our refineries, we will set fire to the refineries and oil fields across the entire region, including those in Saudi Arabia, Azerbaijan, Kuwait, the UAE and Bahrain. So Mersheimer takes this one here very serious, um, saying that the um, that it is actually maybe not direct US assets that are threatened, but that Iran is, is of course demonstrating that they can get to anything in the Middle East that the US has its hands on and could blow up um, oil refineries and could blow, could, uh, is now a seriously threatening also maybe US military installations in the region without even taking into account that Iran could fire at uh, US aircraft carriers, but that would be an, an escalation way further up the ladder, right? But it's the strategy seems to be from the Iranian side to threaten very um, serious damage to US direct interest and especially also to, to the oil market, the global oil market, um, if the big retaliation comes. So 
Um, in terms of the na of the narratives that are going around, in the interesting thing is that at the moment, we are not quite sure how much how many of these missiles worked the way they were intended to, because the Israelis and the New York Times and the the Western media narrative, to a good extent, not completely, but to a good extent, is that uh, the Iron Dome actually worked. My video yesterday, I the thumbnail is like Iron Dome useless, but the, the that was that was my impression after seeing all of these rockets actually uh, hitting the ground, and I think they did hit the ground. I don't think these were fake uh, videos. The um, but what we see in in the Western narrative right now is that they try to uh, show mostly imagery of missiles flying, but not necessarily um, striking. So unlike you, sorry, I need to I need to. Uh, reduce the volume of this one here um here so can you see this one this is an interesting interview on sky news with an israeli um professor um who who talks about this and if you see the imagery that sky news and that also a couple of the other ones are using is that you usually see the the these missiles flying and you also see the videos in which they're being intercepted and clearly explode in uh, in the sky. I think there's like some other footage somewhere here. Yeah, here you can see uh, footage of them being intercepted right over here. And that's, of course, just a subtext, right? But the subtext um, seems, it seems that people want to indicate, no, 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 this didn't work. And actually the official narrative from the New York Times, where do I find it? Because we have counter examples, is that um, Iran's efforts to strike the urban sprawl around Tel Aviv crossed the threshold that Tehran has never previously breached, even during its earlier missile attacks in April, which targeted air bases, but not civilian areas. Critics of Israel often see the country as the primary instigator of unrest in the Middle East, but most Israelis see themselves as the victims of constant attacks from Iran's proxies. The, the New York Times tries to kind of explain explain why this is an unprecedented act by Tehran and absolutely unacceptable, while at the same time they need to somehow square the circle that uh, Israel actually didn't uh, really kill anyone except for one Palestinian man who apparently died in the West Bank, which is like extremely uh, sad and ironic. Um, who was hit by debris from one of these rockets being inter being intercepted, uh, but the the actual targets that Iran hit uh, were hit at night, at dead of night, when they when even the military sites there were, there was nobody there apparently, um, and the, uh, the 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 precision which with which these missiles were fired were was also quite was was apparently very good because the ones that weren't intercepted, the ones that actually landed uh, on their on their targets um, hit outside of these city centers, uh, outside of the centers, even for the places that, that were hit that were very close to um, civilian infrastructure. There is civilian infrastructure which was hit. There was a school that actually got hit. There was there was civilian infrastructure, but the, the people were, nobody died actually. And I think this must be something that Netanyahu actually regrets at this point, because if there were civilian deaths, then it would be much easier to uh, justify uh, a counter reaction. So it seems that Iran again, again, very precisely calibrated its um, its attack and made it one notch more intensive and one one notch closer to actually killing some killing people um, with the strikes themselves, not just with the debris, but with the strikes, but didn't quite go there yet. So it seems to be another one of these very, very well choreographed, very well, not choreographed, but very well um, uh, planned attacks with the purpose of sending a very clear message. This was not a we are starting an all out war kind of attack on Israel. This was a message and the message, I think, is actually being understood by the West because there is not an immediate um, sprawl by the by the US to shoot as many missiles as Iran at the Iran as you can. Uh, right now, it's time for deliberation. So again, this is this this is this uh, tit for tat 
kind of that's going on at the moment and Israel um, threw back the ball into the court of the Americans and the Israelis but they did not start an all-out war with this attack and that's not what it was meant to be um, so the uh, the, it was, by the way, it was this professor, uh, Muhammad, um, Said Mohammad Marandi, who recently was on the Duran um, and talked to Glenn Deason and Alex uh, Mercuries. Um, I can look it, up, look it up if you want. He's one of the, he, he's, he's kind of part academic, part uh, integrated into the uh, kind of foreign policy circles and, and, and um, uh, nuclear decision making circles of the Iranians. So he has these, he has this kind of a double face, like he's clearly front facing for the Iranians as well. Um, interestingly, you know, um, in the BBC and in the media, like there is no clear narrative established, that's for sure. So this is not one of these cases where the whole Western media got a memo and then and is kind of following the the the, the usual spiel. It's like something that a lot um, of the Western media still try to kind of uh, understand um, how they want to report about it, what what it was. So the BBC, for instance, reports that. Um, Israeli's military said most of the missiles were intercepted, but that a small number struck central or southern Israel. They're reporting on the on the Israeli side, of course, and the Israeli side seemingly wants to downplay what this what this strike was. On the one hand, they're saying it's unprecedented and it's absolutely unacceptable, and it's da da da. On the other hand, it, they actually didn't achieve anything. That's that's what Israel and and here also the BBC wants to get through. Um, whether or not that's true is another question. I mean, it is it is pretty clear that something was hit, something was struck, and that also we don't know yet. And that the Israelis, also when it comes to the Mossad headquarter, are not willing to either show us photos and proofs of the of the headquarter being totally fine or being totally destroyed. And we there's this this weird kind of media insecurity at the moment of what actually what was actually um, damaged and whatnot. And this to me indicates that probably more things got seriously damaged than the Israelis would like to admit because what they want to project now is strength on their side and weakness on the enemy side because that's how you whip up entire populations in order to make sure that they're willing to go to war. Um, the BBC article also says that there were a small number of hits in the center of Israel and other hits in southern Israel, said IDF spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari. The majority of the incoming missiles were intercepted by Israel and the defensive coalition led by the United States. The Israeli military confirmed on Wednesday some of its air bases had been hit during the attack but said no weapons, aircraft or critical infrastructure were damaged and that Air Force operational abilities were not affected. I mean, if you are forced to put something like this out and you're forced to admit that something was hit but you're not willing to really like show pictures of it, that's usually not a good sign. I mean, we've seen that a lot in the Ukraine war, right? How we how we got these messages of Ukraine is fine, Ukraine is fine, Ukraine is fine, nothing to worry about. They're super, they're super strong. But then we find out that actually uh, entire units are being like decimated, and that the uh, the strength of the uh, of the Ukrainian army is really nothing of what was being reported. So we cannot trust that this is true. And the fact that we don't have pictures of these sites is quite ominous because what we have. What we have is uh, is a couple of of um, of videos, cell phone videos that were taken. I'm trying to find them. I mean, here this the BBC does not obviously not try to hide all of that. Um, there again, there's no there's no there's no uh, uh, um, unified narrative at the moment. But uh, this is the BBC showing us um, showing us pictures of of this strike. Again, this is what we've seen before, right? We see how some of these missiles obviously are being shot down and are are um, are, are already are already uh, um, taken out of out of order. Then at the same time, we also see that others clearly uh, uh, impact uh, on on the ground. Because the other weird thing right now is that th this is the only thing that I could kind of discern so far is that if you read BBC, CNN, and the others, uh, what they talk about when they mean impact, they use the word land. The missiles landed in Israel. They didn't they don't say missiles exploded. They don't say missiles hit targets. They say missiles landed <laughs> as intended or not or, or not. It's a funny language to use, but it's 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 an euphemism that I think is being used in order to avoid giving giving the impression that uh, Iran actually really 
hit targets because otherwise you will say hit, right? You wouldn't say land. I, I find it weird to speak about missiles as landing on their targets, um, which might indicate that Israel act, that Iran managed to cause more damage than the Israelis would like to be true. So um, there are these open questions and until somebody actually shows us the pictures of the Mossad headquarter and, and, and what, what's, what's happening there right now and until we see the, the craters from the air bases, we don't know. But one more thing then here to add is the the fact that the craters and the the imagery that we do get that we do see um, seem to indicate that uh, either a lot of these missiles actually were shot down or the ones that get through were not really meant to do harm because some of these craters are just quite small. Um, the which would make total sense to me. I mean, the Iranians didn't intend to kill with these with these things. They meant to send the clear message: we could kill and we could destroy a lot of your infrastructure if we chose to do so. This time we are choosing not to. Therefore, even the missiles that we have, we're not gonna give them the big explosive warheads, right? We are not gonna cause. A huge explosions on the ground. We're going to cause damage, but not uh, death and destruction, which we could if we if we chose to do so. This is also one of the analysis, by the way, in the Tehran Times. I found this piece here quite interesting by um, Xavier Villar in the Tehran Times, where he goes through the through the strike and says that the IRGC claimed that approximately 400 missiles were fired at military targets in Tel Aviv which contrasts with the 180, that number that is now going around in the New York Times circles and so on. So uh, it seems that the Iranians want to say that we fired more than we're being given credit for. Um, Iranian media, media citing sources close to the operation claimed that over 80% of the missiles in the first wave hit their intended targets. The headquarters of the Mossad, Israel's intelligence agency, was completely destroyed. So that's what the Iranians are saying. And again, we don't we don't get the denials. We don't get the pictures that would prove this to be wrong from the uh, from the Israeli side, which makes me wonder might be true. And then several air bases were hit. Um, the operation reflects Iran's need to regain its capability of threat. Yes, I think that's absolutely the case. While Israel seeks to maximize casualties in each attack, doing everything possible not only to avoid them but also to increase them, Iran as seen in this attack, has consciously avoided targeting what are considered civilian objectives. Uh, I think this is largely true. I mean, if we look at the, the brutality and the strategy of Israel in Beirut and, of course, in Gaza, where neighborhoods are flattened and on a daily basis, tens, if not hundreds of people, civilians, die, this, uh, this strike by Iran against Israel was very, very, very measured again, right? It's it's not on a comparable scale. Of course, the Western media and, and Western uh, leadership, including Keir Starmer, including Joe Biden, uh, try to make this seem like the largest and most horrible attack that ever has occurred. But in a matter of fact, and, and, and this was, again, a very limited strike. Um, so let me quickly check my notes. The ball is now clearly again in the court of the Israelis. The question is, what will will they attack? Will they counterattack? Will they do a real counterattack? Because apparently last time the the discussion between these people was on whether or not um, Israel should uh, should use its full capability, and then they chose not to, or they were uh, they were pressured by the United States not to, and just do another. Uh, um, symbolic counter-strike against some uh, radar, uh, Iranian radar station, which then kind of uh, the, the escalation ended there. Uh, the Israelis are talking about hitting nuclear facilities in Iran. The Americans apparently have said no to this uh, to this one so far, uh, if we if we can believe those reports, um, and the the threat though is to of course hit. Tehran's and hit is uh, Iran's uh, oil refineries and facilities. 
uh, with the idea that again, just as with with Russia, that you take out the ability of of Iran to make money, and then thereby the regime then will crumble and and and, and will vanish, which clearly ain't gonna happen. But if you if you target these oil refineries apart from the horrible horrible um, environmental impact this would have. Um, it would, of course, be a huge blow um, to Iran, and these these refineries are relatively easy to hit because even if one of a few of, of many rockets gets through, it would it's, it's oil. It will burn like uh, like there's no tomorrow, right? So um, the Iranians are threatening to counterattack the oil uh, uh, production facilities of the Americans, even in in uh, states that are not involved in this so far, even Kuwait and so on. So this would be a huge escalation. Uh, in, in the way that uh, in the number of of states involved in this, um, the it seems to me that we are now like walking towards a game of chicken, and both sides dead set on not blinking first, uh, racing toward each other. Um, because it is clear that last time Iran did a strike like this, it actually coordinated with the Americans. This time they seemingly didn't, or only very shortly before the attack, made announcements to other and, and, and connected um, governments that something was coming. Yeah, so that's where we are. Uh, interesting, isn't it, that uh, even in a, with a free media environment and so on, we, in the free world, <laughs> we, we are constantly uh, hit by the fog of war. And this might de-escalate again with a bit of luck, but much will also depend on what's happening now in uh, Lebanon and in Israel's and the United States, whether Israel and the United States choose to respond directly to Iran by hitting them or indirectly by hitting something further in Lebanon and escalating with Lebanon, which might be another strategy to go in order to break up Iran's uh, allies. By the way, last comment from me. Please notice how in Western media uh, the US and, e and Israel always talk about their allies and how they stand behind their allies and how all of the allies of Iran are constantly called proxies, Iran's proxies, the proxy. I don't know why I noticed this for the first time, but this um, the, the use of language is just um, such a huge part of the framing. Anyhow, um, so far my analysis about this uh, will we'll stay on it and see what happens. Uh, fingers crossed that no next Gulf War, huge Gulf War is coming. Let's hope that people actually start de-escalating. Good night. Uh -huh.